find a line that has a beginning, a middle, and an end. It's clear, we know instantly what they're talking about, so the audience doesn't have to play catch up like, oh, he's talking about ice cream. Oh, okay, cool, like, I know, I know, okay. You don't want them to ever think that, you just want them to know, oh, this character wants ice cream now and he's trying to find the dollar so he can buy an ice cream. You want all that stuff to connect instantly in the brain, that way the audience isn't thinking, asking themselves these questions and they should be watching your animation. And then, basically, what I do, I just have a little handheld camera, you know, that records video. I put on a little tripod, and as you can see, I have my computer here, and I have the line running on loop. And what I'll do to the beginning of the audio is usually I will put something like one, two, three, four, five, and the line will start. That way, I have like a bumper, and usually it's good to give your character something to do beforehand, you know, like. Right here, I'm, I'm stressed, you know, it's not like I'm, I'm starting my line like this, like, is it going to start? And then when it starts, I'm, because then you're just kind of playing catch up, you know, like, another good technique that they use in theater is, um, you know, where was your character the scene before this? My girl was just running, she just stopped, you know, she could be out of air, you know, she could be breathing like that, like, so those five seconds, that's what I'm doing. I'm breathing heavy, I'm, you know, getting into it. That way when the line starts, everything's natural, like, my heart, everything's like in the same state of emotion that she would be in. So when the line starts rolling, I'm just rolling straight into it. I'm not like, okay, the line started, okay, start. So, because then you're always playing catch up with the line and it's never, you're never true, you're always a little bit behind. So here we are at our second pose. Here's my pose again. What's my line of action? There it is, it's a really clear line of action. Clear line of action there. You know, um, shoulders, this one's higher, this one's lower. Just put dots on them. Here I can see my hips, you know, shoulder, shoulder. I've established what my shoulders are doing. I've established that you can see the top of my shoulders here. And you can see the side of my body. That's why in the drawing, you can see the top of my shoulders which is completely different than if the character was something like this Oops. where the top of their body is facing up towards the ceiling see how the top of the shoulders are facing up and here they're facing towards us um, so just deciding all that stuff and it's just simple cubes see those are simple cubes but I know that I'm gonna see the side of this body I know where my shoulders are and I even have little things like oh here the foot goes up a little bit as I can see, my foot bends a little bit, you know? I just have stick knees and stick arms. You know, I've solved some negative space right here. You know, there's a little bit of negative space between here. You know, solving all that stuff. You look at my video reference, my arm is like this, perfect straight. Here, I thought it would go more with the line of action if my arm was more like this, you know? And here, I just have this straight arm like this. Over here, I made my arm a little bit more like this and tilted this hand on the wrist so it could go more with the line of action. So it's constantly like we're taking what you have in your video reference and applying it to a drawing in a very simple way, just squares. Squares and lines.